Hi there, Mike Brady with Generosity Wealth Management, a comprehensive full service financial services firm headquartered right here in Boulder, Colorado. Although you can see from my backdrop, I am actually up at my cabin in Dubois, Wyoming, where I spend every summer. I continue to work here. Um, I have wonderful views. As a matter of fact, I was going to record this video outside of our rustic cabin, um, but it was too sunny and I kept squinting. So I'm going to uh, put up on the screen a couple of photos that I've taken this morning so you can get an idea of uh, what I look at when I'm looking outside of my the windows of my of my office up here. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. I hope that you also have an opportunity to get away. Um, frankly, uh, I was stay at home anyway in Boulder, so we may as well do the stay at home here with quick jaunts down to Boulder as needed. Uh, today, I want to talk about, of course, the current um, situation um, and put that, of course, into context. But I also want to talk about some key principles because um, one of the books that I have really liked over the years was The Millionaire Next Door. And what he talked about in that book is there are certain key, um, how can I say it, attitudes and behaviors of millionaires that we could all learn from. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to take it also kind of on the flip side of some key things that I've seen that we should avoid. And um, so I want to talk about some key principles. I sound like a broken record many times, particularly if you listen to my videos a lot, because these key principles sneak into every single one of my videos, it feels like, uh, because they are foundational and a basis for long term um, in my opinion, uh, getting to where you want to be with your financial goals. Now, um, so far this year, we've had an unbelievably good couple of months. I'm recording this on um, in Thursday, um, the I think it's the 11th or the 12th. Um, and so I think that's the 11th. And, you know, it's it's nobody saw this happening so quickly uh, two months ago. And one of the key principles that I have is humility. Um, you know, it's amazing to me that when people talk about the future or they hear someone talking about the future, they talk with such confidence that they, they almost believe that it's going to happen. And then when it doesn't, they somehow forget. And then the next person around gives them such confidence um, about what is the future, and that's not very helpful. So I'm going to come back to this key principle. Up on the screen, I have shown over the last 25 years the ups and downs in um, the S&P 500, which is an unmanaged stock market index. Now, while we have gone through a couple of really difficult times, like 2008 and this year, which was very sharp, very, very painful in a very um, uh, short amount of time, I would argue that, you know, someone who's been around for 30 years doing this professionally, working with clients and et cetera, is um, 2000, 2001, and 2002 were some of the most difficult years, not because they were the lowest, but because it was one year followed by another by another. Duration and, um, and losing the faith after a while is what really dooms many people in, you know, in my experience. Um, those people who um, you know, lost the faith and then wanted to go to money market or CDs you know, around 2002, 2003 did not see the nice upswings that have happened over the next 10 or 15 years. Up on the screen, you're going to see an arrow uh, next to where we are now. Uh, you know, I think nobody foresaw the sharp upswing in the stock market over the last, uh, you know, two, two and a half months or so. I'm recording this on Thursday. And so, yes, uh, today is a down day. Yes, it's going to get lots of um, good news coverage and very um, newsworthy. You know, there's an old adage that uh, the stock market takes the stairs up and the escalator, or sorry, and the elevator down. And that just means that it's kind of 200, 300 points, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then it gives it up very quickly. Um, one of my key principles, which I'm going to get to in a minute, is um, being overly optimistic or being overly pessimistic. If only, um, you know, you look at the negatives, you're doing yourself a disservice 
and I think that you're going to be unhappy and uh, along this path. Um, so uh, let's go to another chart. This is um, a chart that shows since the last major financial crisis in 2008. And there were 10 major pullbacks along that. Okay, 10 major pullbacks, of which the worst one was this last March. It is important for us to remember that it is a long-term strategy and you don't take short-term events and extrapolate them into long-term um, decisions if your goals are long-term. Now, one thing that uh, people periodically say to me is like, hey, I'm 70 years old. Maybe I'm 75 years old. Uh, I'm always looking short-term. I remember, I remember my grandmother, she was in her 80s and uh, she was very feisty and she says, Mike, I'm not buying green bananas. Okay, which, is, which I always thought was very funny, and I still do. You still have a long time horizon, I would argue, because you don't want to outlive your money, and unless you know you're going to live, you know, die in the next 6 to 12 months, um, you know, let's all hope that you're living 5, 10, 20 plus years, even if you're, of course, retired and living off your money. Um, most people that I meet with don't want to outlive their money, and they want to pass on the most that they can to the charities they care about or their heirs. And so we can still invest for a multiple year time horizon. Therefore, we should not be uh, allow our emotions to be controlled on a daily, weekly, or even a monthly basis. So it just is not helpful to you. Um, and it's, it's going to make you, um, you know, very, very unhappy. On... Um, on that screen, though, I am showing where we are right now. Um, you know, nobody saw two, three months ago what we have now. And so now I'm going to start um, pivoting over to some key principles, which is the first one of humility. Uh, anyone who talks absolutely about the future is crazy or a fool. And I don't want you to be that person if you're listening to them. Um, you know, we can say, hey, I think this is what's going to happen. Um, I want to increase my probability of uh, the desired outcome that I have in the future. So I do everything I can in order to, to situate it in a, a certain way. But there's no guarantees absolutely about the future in any aspect of our lives and finances are no different. So humility is the first one. The second is having to understand everything. You know, I don't know how about you, but every day there's always a reason why the market goes up or down, okay? And it, and it uh, vacillates every day. If the market's up, it's renewed optimism. Uh, the next day it's down, it's uh, real new pessimism about this. I mean, all in 24 hours, that's crazy, okay? So um, the mind is very uh, logical and pattern making and we look up at the clouds, you know, when we're on a, a wonderful pasture and uh, we see patterns. Our mind puts together that that cloud is absolutely, uh, you know, a sheep or, uh, you know, a car or whatever it might be. When, of course, our logical brains tell us that's not the case. And so many times our brain also um, uh, starts to control the emotions and things that are going up, we believe, will always go up. Or things that are going down will always go down, even if we look at the history of the unmanaged stock market indexes, unmanaged bond indexes that are diversified, and that's never always been the case, okay? As a matter of fact, I'm gonna put a chart up there. You've seen this before from me. Um, a 50-50, and I'm circling it right now, a 50-50 stock and bond going back to 1950 has a 100% break even over five years. Yes, a loss in one year. Yes, a loss in two or three years, but over five years, a 50% of the S&P 500 and the 50% of a bond index, which you should always be diversified, and it was probably a bumpy ride along the way, is a 100% break even, although the future could be different, okay? I have that humility as well, that no one knows the future, but you know what? That's um, something that I'm very interested in, and that, um, you know, when, when you find yourself being overly fearful or overly pessimistic, it's good to remember that, and that's why we have diversified portfolios. The third thing is, uh, what is your conviction? Okay, that is a key principle. Are you invested for the long term or the short term? 
And it's okay to be invested for the short term. Um, you just got to know which one it is. And if you are invested for the long term, and in my mind, I think of the long term of being two, three, five, ten years, okay? Um, if you are invested for the long term, then you've got to believe that the market's going to be higher over that long term time frame. Otherwise, why do you have any investments? I mean, that makes no sense. Why would you invest in something if you truly believe that in a longer time frame, um, it's going to be negative? You should just put that in your mattress or a safe or something, some safety deposit bag. So what is your conviction and stick to it? Very important. Number four is uh, being overly optimistic, overly pessimistic. Bull markets, um, many times turn into bubbles and that are people who are being overly optimistic. Um, on the flip side, there are overly pessimistic individuals as well. And you, you take three steps forward, two steps back. All they talk about are the two steps back. That's not the full picture. That's not the context. And if we're going to use logic and we're going to use some uh, rational um, thinking in approaching the problems uh, that you have, then you've got to be aware of the two, find something in between. That's why um, I try to not be overly emotional in these videos. Uh, every once in a while, someone will come to me and say, gosh, uh, you know, this big event just happened one way or the other, and you were so you know, even keeled. And the answer is, well, yeah. One, um, I've seen pretty much, it feels like I've seen everything over the last 30 years, so it's hard to surprise me anymore. But even then, um, I'm approaching things from a rational point of view in order to get to that uh, end result. I see variables in an equation, and I am focused on what is the solution that we want. And uh, I have yet to find that being emotional about it is one of the, uh, helps me with any of those variables and getting to the solution. And then the um, kind of the uh, uh, last thing is uh, overly and uh, overly complicated and um, looking for quick and easy solutions. Okay, what do I mean by that? S um, have you ever found someone who wants to lose weight or get in shape and they have this really complicated um, system, okay? They're going from uh, one diet to the next diet to the third diet and they just won't stick with it or they're looking for some get rich, not, not get rich, get thin, quick scheme, okay? Whether it's the um, w this pill or that liposuction or something that's, you know, thigh master, whatever it might be, um, you know, they overcomplicate it. Uh, burn more calories than uh, what you take in. Um, you know, exercise X number of minutes, you know, 45 minutes every day or three times a week or, you know, do something that works for you, but also don't overcomplicate it. I had a situation where someone um, was referred to me. And by the way, you should always refer people to me, uh, even if we're not right for each other long term. That's for us to determine, but I always try to give them, you know, complimentary advice and point them in the right direction. And this was actually someone who'd been referred to me a long time ago, and it's very painful because they just can't seem to um, make good decisions. Like the millionaire next door, they're the opposite. There is something that this person brings that um, is really holding them back, and I try to point that out to them. I'm sure that we all know someone who has just been unlucky in love and maybe they're your best friend from when you were five years old and you look back at their life and they're like, yeah, he or she is going to, you know, always seems to pick the wrong guy or gal. And, um, you know, there's just, you know, they just can't quite, you know, there's a behavior, there's an attitude that they bring that's obvious to you that might not be obvious to them. And what I find is many times people who are uh, later on in life, they have certain uh, habits or attitudes that are holding them back. And so one of the purposes of my videos here is to talk about what is that bias? What is that attitude and behavior that might be holding us back? And how does that apply in a logical format? Being emotional, having biases, all that, absolutely human to uh, absolutely common to being a human being. And I would want it no other way. But it doesn't mean it's got to rule our lives and not everyone can do that, okay? Um, and, um, the, you know, 
there's not necessarily easy answers. Uh, I mean, there are different types of people. Some people, um, you know, have a wonderful experience at the grocery store. They get up, they pay for their food, they get in line, and then they leave and they say, wow, that was really fun. Other people go and get their groceries and they're obsessing of which line to get into. They're swapping lines. They're going from this one to that one to this one to, you know, I mean, I have to tell you, uh, I watch people sometimes at the uh, TSA, um, you know, getting through the, um, you know, the conveyor belt deal. And some people are swapping from line to line to try to find the absolute best. And others are just totally chill, um, just waiting their turn and going right through. Everybody gets to the plane at the same time. I, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, one person had a good experience, one person had a stressful experience. They might have gotten to the same spot, two different experiences, okay? That's it, that's all I've got for today. Um, I'm gonna have another video coming out to you by the end of the month, uh, all ready for July 1st, uh, the end of the quarter. Um, between now and the end of the quarter, if something huge happens, of course, I'll get one out even quicker to you. Um, volatility has not gone away, even if it's uh, gone to bed for a little while. Let's keep our eye on the big picture. Um, just because, you know, it's given up some in one day or maybe two days or a week, I don't know what it's going to do at this point. Um, it's a good thing that I don't need the money tomorrow or you don't need the money tomorrow or next week, okay? Because uh, you'd have no money in the market. So um, that's why we have to keep in mind the context of what we're doing. Michael Brady, 303-747-6455. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. See ya. Bye-bye.